All right, Internet Society New York chapter, are we ready to start live streaming? Uh-oh, we're already live streaming. Um, hello, everybody, welcome. My name is Noel. I'm the executive director of Beta NYC, um, and this is gonna be a two-handed operation with the screens that we've got. Um, first, I wanna say welcome, universe. We're broadcasting on every spectrum we could possibly find out into the wonderful wilds that is the universe. Uh, you can get it in one location only, though, and that is uh, through the Internet Society's New York chapter, and we couldn't be able to stream this without their ongoing and dedicated support. So thank you, Internet Society New York chapter. Uh, Jolly and Pam are here today. Um, thank you. There will be a number of uh, AV techs um, that will be in each room. Um, so if you're a presenter, please make sure that they're recording your presentation before you get started. Because for those people who are not able to be here today, uh, or for the people who can't attend your particular session, we want to make sure that it's going to be recorded and then processed by the Internet Society. And we'll get those videos up in about a month or so. Um, we go through a pretty, they go through a pretty laborious process to make sure sure that you sound as perfect as possible. Um, again, my name is Noel. It's a pleasure to be in front of all of you again for our annual Beta NYC's School of Data. <laughs> Comically, um, we've all seen the musical Rent, we've seen the parodies. Uh, we have our own particular version of our version of 500,000, 525,600 minutes. Uh, can anybody tell me what this number means? It's the number of minutes in a year. And the question is, how do you measure a moment, right? So you've got 525,600 minutes, moments so dear, they're minutes in a year, and how do you measure a moment? Do you measure it in data sets, in rows, in midnight projects, cups of coffees, in regressions, pie charts, bike rides, miles, uh, self-sealing stem bolts for you Trekkies out there, uh, in dirty diapers, in laughter, and in strife? In 525,600 minutes, how do you measure a year in the life? Well, we like to measure it in love, right? That's a good measurement. And we're here today to celebrate what is our collective love through CUNY Law School. They give us this venue uh, pretty much at a super discounted price, and we couldn't be able to do this conference with them. So we're gonna send them our love. Uh, how many of you are students at CUNY Law? Uh, how many of you are graduates at CUNY Law? Oh, they're in midterms. Okay, so I'm glad you're not here. That's the most important part. Um, uh, CUNY Law is the number one public interest law school in America. Um, it is right here in Queens. Uh, we couldn't do this conference without them, and we send them our unflinching love. Uh, for those of you here in the back, there's still some seats. If you have an empty seat, can you put your hand up so that we, we can find it? All right, we got some seats in the very front row. Um, we could not do CUNY Law. Um, we cannot do this conference without CUNY Law. With that, um, we also can't do this conference without acknowledging where we are physically. Beta NYC acknowledges that the land politically designated as New York City to be the homeland of the Lenape who were violently displaced as a result of European settler colonialism over the course of 400 years. The Lenape are a disparate, dis, dis, uh, a dis, uh, I can't say this word. Yeah. Um, Diaspora people that remain closely connected with the land and its rightful stewards. We also recognize that New York City is the largest urban Native American and indigenous population in the United States. New York City is home to over 115,000 intertribal Native Americans, First Nations, and indigenous people. It is the largest out of many, uh, any urban area across Turtle Island. Some uh, have been born here with family roots in New York and areas surrounding the nations that go back for generations. Others have come to New York City to find what they couldn't find anywhere else. 
Each one is contributing to the rich and diverse culture that is New York City's urban native community. We at Beta NYC respect all Native peoples, past, present, and future, their continuing presence in the homeland throughout the indigenous diaspora. We offer our care and gratitude to the indigenous people of many nations who continue to act as stewards of the land to this day, and we encourage you to learn more about these vibrant communities among us. We also pay respect to the indentured servants and slaves who were brought to these lands to build the city that we know today. We also give thanks to our ancestral mothers who fought for and continue to fight for universal suffrage and human rights. Our future is not siloed. Equality, equity, and opportunity are all interconnected. Small things, small actions truly matter. For those of you who don't know, this is the little tiny dot that we are on the East Coast. Here we are again at a little bit of a global scale. Once again, from a little bit further far away, from our furthest spaceship that we've been able to send out, this is the greatest selfie that we've been able to take. This is from Voyager 1 as it passes through the rings of Saturn. Here we are, everything that we know, everything that we love, everything that we'll ever know until we send out spaceships further beyond or telescopes to look out into the heavens, this is where we are. The nitrogen in our DNA and the calcium in our teeth, the iron in our blood, the carbon in our apple pies were made in the interiors of collapsing stars. We truly are star stuff. Thanks, Carl Sagan. Today's morning theme is about small things that matter. In 2017, we launched Open Data Week with the assistance of Adrian Schmoker and then the CTO's office. Um, and we were able to kick off what has now become a wonderful festival that is a week-long celebration of open data, the people, the places, the projects, and everything in between that we call New York City Open Data. We thank OTI and the Beta NYC team, and especially the Data Through Design uh, Art Collective for putting on a really fantastic week. This week, we had, well, prior to this week, we had 182 session ideas. We were able to organize, we, meaning you, were able to organize 62 events. We had 169 presenters, 21 event captains, and one amazing week. Throughout this week, we have celebrated four core freedoms that Beta NYC put together at the People's Roadmap to a Digital New York City. They're the freedom to connect, the freedom to learn, the freedom to innovate, and the freedom to collaborate. And one of the presentations at the Data Through Design uh, exhibit was really remarkable. It was from Claudia and Gabriella. Um, the year is 2124, and New York City is experiencing the aftermath of extreme climate change. The sea level has risen, emerging coastal areas and flooding subway lines, changing which parts of the city we have access to. Many more folks have turned to local communities and resources to help them gather the resources and needs that they have because what we had as a government has failed to provide to them. Octavia is a bike messenger who travels around the city and transports food and other resources from community gardens, to community fridges, and pantries. She has taken it upon herself to share this information with the folks and the works that she interacts with. She has added a map to her jacket showing where folks can find food and how they can safely navigate the city. She has embroidered the jacket so that way as conditions change and as people give her updated information, she can easily add them and remove them as needed. The buttons on her jacket are made of NFC, NFC tags, which contain additional information and resources that can be viewed by scanning with a smartphone. This is a really awesome exhibit of and a representation of taking open data and taking where we could be uh, and making it as uh, a, um, a thread, a literal thread, and stitching together all of the opportunities and the resources and the information that we have together. Um, I wanted to 
point out this particular jacket because of the quotes that are stitched into it. Um, they come from the solar punk future and love, lovingly uh, embroidered Octavia Butler's uh, quote of all that you touch, you change. All that you change changes you. The only lasting truth is change. And here at School of Data, we're constantly immersing ourselves in the changing environment that is our municipal data. Today, we're going to talk about humanizing that data. And today, we're going to do this because of you. We couldn't do this without the community. So thank you for being here. Thank you for presenting. Uh, if you've ever volunteered or presented at a Beta NYC event, thank you. Can we get today's volunteers and presenters to either to stand up or wave a hand? Because these are the people that are making the conference today. Next to that, I want to thank OTI, our Office of Technology and Innovation, and the Open Data Coordinators, and all of the people within agencies who help make our data possible. So with that, can you please stand up and wave your hands, because we want to say thank you for making the data available. And with that, I'm, going to in I'm introducing our Chief Analytics Officer, Martha Norick. All right, Noel stole my bit, because I was going to ask Open Data Coordinators to raise their hands, so <laughs> we're going to do it again. Sorry, there we go. Is this other mic better, do you think, Noel, or the, this guy, or no? If you want it, you can have it. I don't know. Does this sound better? Yeah. Okay. I think that mic is not as loud as one would wish it to be. Okay, hello, good morning. Hi. Oh my gosh, there's so many of you. I mean, wow. Um, all right, I'm Martha Norick. I am the city's chief analytics officer. I am also the city's chief open platform officer, fun fact, um, which means that I have the distinct pleasure and honor of being the person in the New York City government that is making sure that open data is there for all of us. Um, with uh, I say that as if I do it, which is completely... Uh, I mean, true, but also not true. Um, if you are on the open data team at OTI, please raise your hand. Woo! There we go. I see. Who do I see? I know, oh, there's Alex over there. Okay. We've got Alex, we've got Zachary, we've got Ariana, we've got Oliver, honorary open data team member. <laughs> Um, we are a small but mighty team um, at the Office of Data Analytics, and we are, I think this is like, this is our Super Bowl, this is our like, you know, fa best favorite week of the year. We're so excited um, to be here and be part of this amazing Open Data Week Festival and School of Data today. Um, also, who's gone to see the art exhibit? Who's seen, oh, oh, good, oh my gosh, yay. Um, that's awesome. If you haven't seen it yet, it's open through tomorrow. And tomorrow there's going to be a panel with the artists, um, which is always super interesting. Last year I helped moderate it. And honestly, it was like the scariest professional experience of my life because I am not an artist. And uh, asking like deep, profound questions of artists about their work, I was like, I am so uniquely unqualified to do this. Um, but Open Data Week is really about, you know, demystifying this website full of, you know, potentially intimidating looking tables um, and really helping people understand that every single piece of data, every single row in a data set in Open Data, you know, represents something about your life in New York City or about someone's life in New York City. Um, you know, it's this huge thing that's made up of lots of little, 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 little small pieces um, and the actions that the open data team takes and open data coordinators, which I'm not going to make you raise your hand again, even though I wanted to, um, but every agency and office in New York City has an open data coordinator, and these open data coordinators are really the lifeblood of this program. They are the ones that, uh, that are working within their agencies, sometimes extremely big agencies, to make sure that every piece of information that the city can put on open data is there. It's, I, it is always, not always the most glamorous work 
Um, you know, it's a lot of like, um, let's say, let's describe it as maybe like friendly nagging. Um, it's a lot of sort of following up with people. It's a lot of emails. It's not like, you know, and these, this is work that people are doing on top of their regular jobs, um, you know, as a part of their of their regular jobs. So really, I I recognize how um, I recognize how uh, how difficult your work can be sometimes. I recognize how valuable your work is, and we really I think you know we're all here today to celebrate this amazing da uh, set of data that is really just only possible because of you. Um, all right, um, and. And you know, as I said, in every single you know row of open data, you can see you can find out something about New Yorkers. And I think the cool thing about it is really like, um, you know, these really small moments are represented in data. And then it's also on us to make sure that we're taking the time and the care to really understand what that data represent. Who's worked with the three one one data set before? I was expecting every single hand. That's great. Um, um, who wants to who wants to say what a row in that data set represents? What does a row in the 311 data set represent? Ooh, ooh, I've heard, I've heard, I heard calls, I heard complaints, I heard service requests. You know, it's interesting. I think everybody sort of thinks about this data set as like the, you know, the answer to the life, the universe, and everything. You know, we can look in this 311 data set. It's so big. There's so many rows of data. It must, you know, contain the answer to all of the things. But like for example, I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm not gonna, uh, you know, I don't want to pick on anybody, but to whoever said, you know, it represents a call, you know, it actually doesn't represent a call. It could represent a text message. It could represent a, you know, a website interaction where someone files a service request on the website. Um, you know, if a, how many of you have seen a rat in New York City and not called the city about it? Great, excellent. So you know, is every rat sighting in New York City represented in New York City's Open Data 311 service request web data set? Absolutely not. There are unobserved rats. There are unreported rats. The rats are just wild, man. They're everywhere. Um, so I think that sort of like you know that thoughtfulness about what a row represents in that data set is really you know these are the sort of small moments and the small opportunities for us to really think about what um, how data are generated, how we use it to answer the questions that we're trying to answer, or really understand what's happening in New York City, and take that moment to sort of reflect and think about it. Um, and, and, and this is the community of folks in which to do that. This is, you know, these are your comrades, these are your, your fellow um, data enthusiasts of New York City that can really, you know, um, it's hard to work on data, you know, data projects are not things that are best done solo. Um, I think they're really best done in community, they're best done in collaboration. You need to have people that check your assumptions, that check your work, that really help you think about like, you know, is this data set the right data set to answer the question that I'm trying to think about? So I'm so excited we all get to spend the day, the day together today. There's so many sessions. I'm like, the tragedy of my life is that I can't go to every single one of them today. Um, I need a time turner like a Hermione in, um, in Harry Potter. Um, but I hope you all have just the most amazing day. And thank you again so much to Beta NYC for being our just very best data friends in the whole world. Um, and we're so excited to be, we're, I'm so excited to be here today. We're all so excited to be here today. And with that, I'm going to stop talking and turn it back over to Noelle. All right. I will use this microphone because I've been bullied into doing it. No, just kidding. Um, uh, so small things matter. When we, I love this photo. How many of you have seen this image before? All right. Um, this is a contextualization when we talk about that data, right? This is where we start looking at the small things inside of our city that make data. Um, I mean, obviously, we and sensors and the things that we create make data. But when we start thinking about the future of artificial intelligence and we start thinking about all these different automated systems, the metadata that exists in these things is really, really important, right? We are on the verge of what some people talk about, you know, the next wave of human existence because we've invented these algorithms and processes that will be able to think faster and create things quicker and, you know, we move into the next level of human existence. But all of that is important. It, it, all of that is dependent upon metadata and having really clean metadata and having really clean context of what that data exists is dependent upon us as humans to more or less give it that particular context. 
Um, so this is my way of really trying to hammer home the idea that small things matter, even when we deal with these large abstract um, generative systems, it is about the metadata. We cannot ignore those things. We cannot ignore the human condition where we start layering in the freedoms, the four freedoms that we have heard for nearly 100 years, the freedoms of speech and the freedoms of religion, and especially the last two, which we don't hear so much, which are the freedoms from want and the freedoms from fear. It's the freedom to exist in a society where we don't have a tyrannical government that is imposing some abstract rule or concept of morality onto all of us, is that we can live freely in peace with each other. That being said, there was a number of our elders came in and realized that when the city's constitution was realized uh, that it was unconstitutional um, in 1989, they gave birth to COPIC, the Commission on Public Information and Communication, which is part of the public advocate. Um, COPIC as a commission, one of its first tasks was to help organize information and to create what we, the first and only public data directory. This is a phone book of open data um, back in 1989 that gave the foundation for us to create the open data law. In 2008, Beta NYC started as the NYC Open Government Meetup as a number of passionate civic hackers and public policy hackers that wanted to see our government move forward into the 21st century and embracing tools and services, digital services and practices like service design so that way we can make sure our government reflects our needs into the 21st century. It took us a few years, um, and we were finally able to get the city's open data law passed on March 7th, 2012. Um, it has a lovely connection to uh, Open Data Week, um, because now we have Open Data Week kind of bookending the city's open data law. It also uh, is around the time period that Sunshine Week is happening, which is a, for those of you who are journalists or, or good government groups, it's an opportunity to really embrace transparency of information. And then we started hosting events. And so this is where we were literally 10 years ago um, in the Flatiron District. I see some familiar faces and got to give a shout out to Joelle, who's right here in the front row for helping host us um, back at this NYU Poly Space Incubator in Manhattan. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you for all of your support through all the years. And since then, we've gone on a really magical journey uh, to figure out, as kind of using user-centered design, to figure out who we are and what we want to do. Um, and in a change from prior years where we got a bunch of elected officials to come up, I want to recenter the Beta NYC organization to all of you so that way you know where we're going for the next decade. We have three core programs. We have our fellowship and apprenticeship, where if you've attended any of our current mapping events or open data events, you have met some of our fellows and apprentices. Um, some of you may have tapped into our resources in our civic innovation lab. Um, at, uh, and then all of you are currently participating in our public data and literacy program. Um, and it is... Uh, a great honor to work with these individuals on the day to day. Um, never have I would have I imagined that I would be working in coalition and in solidarity with such amazing individuals um, that have such diverse lived experiences. Um, and I'm going to ask three of them to come up and talk about the programs that we have. So with that, um, you have to give the loudest round of applause to Kate Nicholson, who has been organizing. Thank you, Noel. Um, it's it's a, such a pleasure working with Noel and my team. Um, so yeah, my name is Kate Nicholson. Uh, I think I've met a lot of you in the room, especially if you're a presenter or volunteer. Um, I help direct our public programs. So I just want to share a little bit about what that means. Uh, our goal through the public programs is to engage and support a diverse community of open data users teachers, advocates, journalists, builders, and designers that are working in the civic interest. We want to see this community succeed. So 
I hope that today, looking around the room, you see that this isn't just another tech conference. Uh, this is, some of you might not even be a technologist. You might work in government and you might be interested in using data in your day-to-day -day life, or you might work for a nonprofit and interested in using data to pursue a community issue. Each of you is coming from a unique and a very valuable lived experience. You have a giant range of community-seated interests and skill sets. Some of you have been involved in Civitech for decades um, or a decade since the open data law. Some of you are brand new to this community. You work in government, you're journalists, you're data engineers, you're analysts, students, designers, librarians, educators, organizers. There's such an array of people in the room. And yes, we look at the registration list in your titles. So um, we're all here in this room because we all want to improve some corner of this city. And one part of our path forward to improve that corner is through open data and technology. And we believe, and we hold this conference every year, because we believe that by bringing you together in this room, uh, or any room, you don't just walk away. You level up, you build connections, and you gr have a greater voice, you gain perspective, you have more solidarity and support, and you go and pursue some really great ideas. And to us, that's a key ingredient to driving change and pushing the boundaries of what we can achieve together for New Yorkers. We also believe that we can't rely on people to come to us and that we need to meet people where they are. So Beta NYC runs a few core programs throughout the year, one of which you're participating in and which Noel and Martha uh, explained gloriously. Uh, we love Open Data Week. We love seeing what people propose every year. I think we had nearly, uh, 100 and, nearly 200 uh, proposals this year that we fit into the week and this conference. Um, so we work a lot in partnership with um, OTI and the Open Data team who share a charter mandated mission to educate New Yorkers about open data. Um, so Open Data Week is one of the ways that we want to engage folks in learning about open data, using it, building with it, uh, advocating with it, holding government accountable, uh, promoting transparency. Another program that we operate is the Open Data Ambassadors. Um, there's a few of you in the room. Uh, shout out to um, a few of you. Yay. Uh, so the Open Data Ambassadors program recruits, trains, and certifies digitally literate cohorts of volunteer ambassadors to teach open data classes across diverse communities of New York City. Right now, we have 21 volunteer open data ambassadors. Some are government employees who regularly work with municipal data, and many others are librarians or data scientists or engineers, researchers, or educators. Um, and a handful of them um, are teaching sessions today, like I said. And throughout the past year and a half, so last year we taught about 1,000 people, um, and we're on track to break that record this year, especially this past week with our daily classes. Uh, so far in 2024, we've taught nearly uh, 600 people, um, these ambassadors have. And um, this is something that started very small, like Noelle sort of was talking about the small moments um, uh, theme. Well, one moment that I love to recollect is one of the first months I was working with Beta NYC. It was February. It was the coldest day of the year. And Noelle's like, all right, we have a class in, um, what community board was it? In Flushing. Flushing, Queens community board. Or who's going to go with me to teach the class? And I was like, I will. And so we hopped on our bikes from Center Street in downtown, biked all the way through, literally the coldest day, windiest day of the year, February like 26, 2019. And we were just like, oh my God, we're so cold. We got to the community board. There's like three people who want to learn about open data. And we taught them this curriculum that we created. And they were so enthused. And this program, the Open Data Ambassadors program, evolved from that and like little moments like that throughout the past 10 years that um, have allowed us to sort of gain traction, build partnerships, and find people like you who are really passionate about this and also want to engage people in open data. So um, I'm not going to take any more time. I'm really happy to have you here today, and especially all the presenters that are making this day possible. Um, thank you for inspiring us to do things with open data. And I'm going to hand it off now to Jazzy, who's going to tell you about her work with the fellowship. Thanks, Jazzy. Yeah. Hello, everybody. How are we feeling? Woo! Nice. OK, I just want a second. If you experience any joy today, like you're like, oh my gosh, this is a delicious breakfast. I love this panel. Please say thank you to Kate, because she is a part of making that happen, and she's put so much into this. Um, 
Okay, so I'm Jazzy, she, her pronouns, fellowship director. Um, some small moments in the fellowship that aren't so small uh, is that we're in our 10th year of the fellowship program. Um, I feel like large swaths of time don't really render to me. I'm like, what does that mean? Um, but really what the 10 years boil down to are the day-to-day -day and minute-to-minute -minute decisions that we make for the fellows. Um, we're a adaptable, nimble, very supportive fellowship team. And our goal is not to make a program in a vacuum. We really want to learn the fellows' dreams and be like, how do we get you there? Here are some other things you also should learn. Um, so we create a very diverse, accessible, and challenging curriculum. Here's some of our awesome fellows. Um, yeah. You will probably see some today, so uh, please introduce yourself. Um, some stats for data folks. Uh, over 56% of our fellows have graduated with a bachelor's degree. 20 of our fellows have gone into tech and data roles, and 19 of our fellows have gone into government roles. Um, we train fellows to be leaders. Uh, throughout their time with us, we really want them to be guided with asking why, um, and then really rigorous and creative in pursuing the how. Um, I think something that's such a focus point is understanding the needs of New Yorkers and how to bridge that gap. Um, the fellows lead in our Mapping for Equity program. Has anyone heard of it? Raise your hand if you have. Oh my gosh, okay, lots of hands. Um, that's so awesome. But what this uh, project is, is we teach fellows how to create open data. Um, they use OpenStreetMap, which is an open source platform. They survey physical spaces to uh, kind of attain the status and count of public amenities like benches, um, water fountains, uh, curb cuts. Are they broken? Are they functioning, et cetera? Um, they're incredible people to work with. Uh, it's an honor, and I can't wait to see where they go and where they continue their leadership. Um, I'm going to pass the baton to Ashley to talk more about the lab. Hi, everyone. My name is Ashley, and I direct the Civic Innovation Lab. The Civic Innovation Lab is where Beta NYC addresses civic challenges with government agencies and community-based organizations using data, technology, and design. Our team works with elected officials, government agencies, and community-based organizations to address pressing research questions, advocate for policy change, and solve problems through technology with our neighbors. So when I think about the small moments and the research and data requests that we serve, um, Part of that, uh, you know, begins with listening to the requests. Uh, what do people actually need? Um, it requires a lot of active listening and understanding and empathy. We try to our best to interpret these needs. Uh, sometimes that means we need to read between the lines and translate those needs to the, the technical details. And finally, we propose solutions. So we try our best to create and innovate tools um, for the public interest. Our research and data assistance requests, or RADARs, are Beta NYC's uh, response to the growing need for public interest technology, data, and research assistance. Our team collaborates with partners to help address these needs while also building up your data and analytics skills. We have served over 200 plus elected officials, community organizations, and nonprofits with over 400 plus research and data assistance requests. Um, I'd also like to give a shout out to Z, who worked on many of these amazing projects you see on screen here. Mm. 
When I think about the team that works on these radars, um, our associates in the lab are, are really talented individuals. Um, there's this term called ik ikigai, which is a Japanese term that translates to a reason to live. It is a concept that encourages people to discover what truly matters to them and to live a life fulfilled with purpose and joy. There are four principles of ikigai. Uh, one is passion, two is vocation, three is mission, and four is profession. So passion means what you love. Uh, I think everyone on our team is very passionate about public interest technology and we all bring a sort of vocation to this. So uh, this is what we're good at. Our team brings amazing skills from web scraping, data analysis, visualization, design, and web development as diverse breadth and depth of skills um, to every project that we do in the lab. Beta NYC's mission is to improve public interest technology and all of the projects and relationships that we make are, are collectively in this interest. And lastly, it is our profession. Public service is a choice that each of us has made. Uh, and many of you, probably most of you as well, uh, can probably also relate to this, uh, being a part of this public interest technology community. So the lab is committed to serving the growing need uh, for public interest technology in New York City. Um, so these are a couple of the different uh, skills that we bring. So from everything from research and data collection to data analysis and visualization, design and communication, web development, and of course, last but not least, the most important of all, partnerships and advocacy. We bring passion to public interest technology. Um, I'm very thankful for this team and the passion that each of us brings to the work that we do here. Um, the tools that we build are, are a product of a, a labor of love. Um, when we put the audience first, um, we think about how to make information more accessible to people. Um, we think about the details of using data responsibly. So the lab welcomes you to submit a request. Um, any, help is, any help that you need, no request is too small. We're happy to provide this service. Thank you. Um, so that's the Beta NYC three of the eight people that we have at the Beta NYC. Um, I want to thank you all for coming up and doing that because this is who we are. This is what we're going to be doing for the next decade. Um, we hope that you can help us out and you can join us and send people our way uh, and give us projects. Um, so on to the very important thing of putting people first. We are putting now you on stage. Um, so welcome to NYC School of Data, a community conference that focuses on four things. You probably bought a ticket already knowing this. Um, just to make sure what you set your expectations to, we've got panels, we've got workshops, we've got office hours, we've got lunch, we've got a discotheque, we've got a happy hour. We're here to have a really awesome and amazing time. Um, we have 185 presenters and organizations that are going to be in front of you today. We have 60 volunteers um, who are wearing Beta NYC shirts. Some of them that you'll see in the halls are going to be wearing high visibility vests. Um, we have 42 amazing sessions and we've got one amazing day. How many of you remember the Care Bears? Yeah. Um, this is us doing the Care Bear Stare. Um, you are one of those Care Bears. You can select whichever one you want. Um, we're here together to have a really amazing day. Keep that in mind. Um, so thank you, community. These are 
all of the presenters and organizations that are here. Um, we also want to say thank you, sponsors. Uh, we couldn't do this without the Office of Technology and Innovation doing all the inside dirty work um, to get all of the agency represent representation and getting all the data set and clearing the path for the city workers to come and participate and to speak as freely as possible. Um, we love and thank the Data Through Design team for doing the amazing work to really slogging it out and finding amazing artists to represent data in unique ways. Um, it is a refreshing art exhibit um, and I look forward to attending every year. Reinvent Albany for their steadfast support of Beta NYC and School of Data, as well as Esri who is sponsoring our volunteer program today. The Alfred P. Sloan Foundation, Rockefeller Brothers Fund, City Council all help support Beta NYC in generous ways and we think we could not be here without them. Uh, and I'm now seeing that I have one minute left to get through all of these slides. And then lastly, CUNY Law School. So thank you volunteers. Um, these are all of our amazing volunteers. If you see them wearing a blue shirt, say thank you. Um, we couldn't be here without them. Logistics. Um, we're changing today's schedule. This is a deviation from the last few years. We've got two sessions that are coming up. Um, then we're gonna have lunch. Then we have two more sessions and then we'll have the discotheque and happy hour. Um, all of this is up on Sketch. Um, the uh, logistics team have pre-printed some schedules around town, so if your phone dies, uh, you'll be able to find um, some schedules that are out here. Um, there is one cancellation. The MTA team could not make it, so um, we don't have any other cancellations. And if there are cancellations, just see that on the schedule. That's where the updates will be. Uh, cowbells. How many of you know what the cowbell means? How many of you know what the cowbell means? <laughs> All right, time's up. That's what it means. Um, uh, we, you'll, you'll hear exactly. Um, somebody should be having the cowbell in here right now. A um, few other logistical things. Thank you, Naima. Um, uh, the third floor cafe, bless you, uh, the third floor cafe will open up at lunchtime. At lunchtime, there'll also be a participatory uh, cartographic session up on the third floor. I encourage you to check that out during the lunch hour. Uh, please wear a mask, uh, except for when you're either presenting, eating, drinking. Uh, do stay hydrated. It's a really important thing to make sure your brain is well lubricated. Um, if you need help, visit the check-in desk or the third floor info desk. Third floor info desk is overseeing our volunteer room as well as our speaker's room. Uh, please don't go beyond that info desk, but it's upstairs on the third floor to help you out. If you have any other logistical needs, go see the front desk. Speaking of a logistical need, if you're here to uh, drink alcohol, adult juice and beverages, um, please visit the check-in desk on the first floor after lunch um, or during lunch. They will be checking your ID. We do need to card you uh, to be legal, um, and then you can have some adult beverages. Um, just a few more things here, as I see some of you have to run off. Um, if you're a speaker, you probably already know this, um, but um, let's talk about just the photo things and consent. Be respectful. Remember, small things matter. We're here to build the future. We have a very detailed, rock solid code of conduct. We will be enforcing that code of conduct. Part of that code of conduct is our photo policy. If you see people wearing black lanyards, that's okay to take their photo. If they're wearing a red lanyard, please ask. They're essentially saying, um, you need my permission. And with that, I'm just a few minutes over. I'm gonna say, go hack the planet. Thank you for being here. Love to see you in the afternoon.